If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. We have drawn a picture of this relatively simple circuit and included in the picture is the battery, which is located in this dashed rectangle. The battery produces an EMF that is indicated by the letter E here, and it has an internal resistance shown by the lowercase r. And then out here we have the resistor, which is indicated by an uppercase r. In part A, we're going to try to calculate the current that is flowing through this resistor. And in order to do that, we can turn to Ohm's law, which tells us that the potential difference across the resistor is equal to the current that flows through it times the resistance. Now, for the potential difference, it turns out that the potential difference across this resistor is going to be the so-called terminal voltage of the battery. So if the battery is producing a terminal voltage of 9 volts, that means that the potential difference across this lone resistor will also be 9 volts. Furthermore, we were given the value of the resistance of this particular resistor, and that was given to us as 8 ohms. So what we'll do is we'll solve this equation for the current. We'll divide both sides by uppercase R. And then we can plug in the terminal voltage of 9 volts, as well as the resistance of 8 ohms. And this is going to give us the current that flows through the resistor. And when we compute that, we get about 1.13 amps. And so this will be the correct answer to part A. And now we can move on to part B, which asks us to determine the EMF of the battery. Remember that the EMF is symbolized by this funny looking E, which is shown right here in the diagram. And one way of solving this is to apply the so-called loop rule. And when we apply the loop rule, what we do is pick an arbitrary starting point. So perhaps we can start here at point A. And we're going to move around the loop until we return back to that point. Now, as we move our way around the loop, we want to be keeping track of potential changes. And that's what we're about to do. So let's start at point A, and let's start moving around the loop indicated by the orange arrows. And we encounter this portion of the battery right here. And whenever we move from the negative terminal to the positive terminal of the battery, we're going to have a positive potential change. And in this case, that'll be equal to the EMF. So we can write positive EMF, and that will account for the potential change across this portion of the battery. And then we move across the resistor. Now, for resistors, we learned earlier that according to Ohm's law, the potential change is equal to current times resistance. In this case, the resistance is the internal resistance of the battery, the lowercase r. And furthermore, you'll notice that as we move in the direction of the orange arrow, we're moving in the same direction as the purple arrow, which is the current. Anytime we move in the same direction as the current, we're going to have a negative potential change. And so the potential change across this internal resistance is going to be a minus, and then we'll have the current times that resistance, as we indicated with this equation here. Now continue around the loop until we encounter this resistor. Again, we're moving in the direction of the current, so there'll be a negative potential change. And this potential change is going to be the current multiplied by uppercase R. So we can fill that in. Now, once we return to where we had started, which was point A, we can set these potential changes equal to zero. Now, we're solving for the EMF, and so we can add the I lowercase r and the I uppercase r over to the right-hand side. And if you want to get fancy, you can factor out an I from both of those terms. So that's going to leave you with lowercase r plus uppercase r, and then we can just fill in the known values. The current we had found earlier, it was 1.13 amps. The lowercase r is the internal resistance, which is 0.15 ohms, and then the uppercase r was the 8 ohms. And when you plug this into your calculator, you should get a, about 9.17 volts. And we're using volts for the unit because that is the standard unit of EMF. So this is the correct answer to part B. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up and also subscribe so you can stay tuned for other videos. Remember, you can send in your own question to the email address that is displayed on the screen, and I will do my best to post the solution to it on YouTube.